Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Well, as uh, as uh, promised, I've been working on a timeline for 2022. I guess I ought to say a few things right up front. One is uh, we've come a long way since the Revelation 12 sign. And many of the watchmen, at least I've been told, I don't really keep up with them, uh, other watchmen, they've sort of dropped off the radar. I don't see any reason for that at all. In fact, uh, every day that goes by, I believe that we are closer and closer to seeing our Lord's face. I have a few reasons why I think that we are close to the rapture, and, and I think most people that are paying attention, whether they're believers or non-believers, uh, there is sort of a, a, a sense of impending doom, you might say, at least on the part of, you know, as far as the world is concerned, we know as believers that you know, we don't have that that same sense of impending doom. What we have is a blessed hope, and and I don't think we should let go of that hope. Uh, I have many reasons why I think that we are very close to the rapture. So I needed to put this out here, and then we're going to continue on in our verse-by-verse -verse studies uh, as we go forward in the year 2022. It's been decided that we're going to go through the uh, the epistle, uh, the first epistle of, of to the Corinthians, First Corinthians, verse by verse. That's sixteen chapters, so that's going to take a while. And uh, I actually find it inconceivable that I would finish First Corinthians. That's that's how close I think that we are there's something that happens to all of us as it regards this you know as as time goes by you know and we see things that that are really relevant pertinent to uh, our Lord's return and we we catalog these things and we document these things and we record these things uh, or we compile this data, I think over a period of time, we forget a lot of it. And uh, folks, I haven't forgot m much of it at all. It's uh, not memory wise I have, but it's all been s so well documented and compiled so much information. There's so much information out there, much more than what I can cover in one video or even a series of videos. There's just that much information out there. Uh, personally, I've got gigabytes of that data. What I believe is, is relevant, pertinent information, which confirms that we are in the right time frame. Now, so there's a few reasons why I think we're close to the rapture, and I'll go through these reasons. Uh, none of this is really in any chronological order, but uh, given his birth date, September 11, 3 B.C., according to the creation calendar, uh, September 11, uh, 28 A.D. would have been when Jesus turned 30 years old. Uh, keep in mind, as you, as you transition from B.C. to A.D., the year zero is not counted. So 30 years old, that's the age required by law or that was required by law uh, for Jesus to begin his ministry. So the hypothesis here is that he would return 2,000 years later in 2029 AD um, from the year that his ministry began, you know, likely in 29 AD. And I know that we're guessing here, but that's all we can do about any of this. So his ministry could have begun in 29 A.D. after he turned 30. Uh, uh, 2,000 years, basically, 29 to 2029. 20, that's that 2,000 years. That's 
uh, 40 Jubilees from 29 uh, to 2029 A.D. This creation calendar that we've used and we've followed for six, seven years now, I believe is, uh, is very accurate because at least I, I look at the creation calendar, folks, even though they revise it and they update it uh, because their research is ongoing just as all the rest of ours is. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's really sincere. They list now the creation year on the, on the calendar as 3979 BC. It was adjusted from 3980. It's now 3979 BC. Therefore, 2022 would mark 6,000 years or 120 jubilees since creation. And I don't guess I... It's, I guess it's worth mentioning that, that uh, we've already, uh, we've all been at this a while. We don't want to forget about all the blood moons. We don't want to forget about the August 21st, 2017 Great American Solar Eclipse, in, in which case there's going to be another one come uh, in April 8th. I believe it's April 8th of 2024. Um which axes out, crosses out America. Uh, I don't think for one second that that August 21st, 2017 solar eclipse was just that it's, well, that happened and we thought it had something to do with uh, end times prophecy and now we no longer think it does. I, I think it does. I think that, that we tend to forget these things as, as well as the Revelation 12 sign. But I, I do believe that it all fits together. It all ties in together. Everything is relevant. Everything uh, has its place in this uh, equation. So we've got all the blood moons. We've got the August 21st, 2017 Great American Solar Eclipse. We've got the Revelation 12 sign, which I believe is pointing, which pointed to the next Shemitah cycle, the 11th Shemitah for Israel being 2022, 2029. Uh, it's uh, 12 years from the Revelation 12 sign in 2017 to the year 2029. Uh, 12, the number 12 uh, is uh, highly symbolic of God's divine uh, uh, order, uh, government. Uh, uh, 12 is... Uh, uh, as far as numbers in the Bible, and I've, I've been criticized heavily over the years for even bothering to look at numbers, but I, I think numbers is just as important as letters. Uh, the letters of the alphabet are in all of this. And then there's all the sevens that are associated with Trump. Well, we've sort of dropped that. We've That kind of fell by the wayside or did it. I mean, uh, I, I may be speaking a lot about that because all of the sevens associated with Trump, that, that seven phenomenon that surrounded uh, Donald Trump and the meaning of seven in Scripture, seven being a divine number, uh, sevens are associated with days of the week, uh, Shemitah periods, uh, 7,000 years. Uh, you know, we talk about Daniel's 70th week. Uh, you know, as well as other things, uh, seven is just a huge, enormous number in Scripture. And uh, so I'll be talking a little bit about that and how that, that association with Trump, how that that must m mean something. And I, I believe it, it must. It has to.
I do know from all this data I've compiled over the years that uh, the Knesset, uh, when they, the Jewish parliament, when they declared by law uh, that Jerusalem was to be the united capital of, of Israel uh, back in July of 1980, that's a 49 or a 50 year period. That's, that's practically a, a uh, jubilee. Uh, December the 6th of 2017, uh, we remember that Trump formally recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. That was uh, December 6, 2017. That's 12 years to 2029. 2029. I know that seems like a, a long way away, but uh, 2029, when we back up seven years, we, we, that brings us back to 2022. We can't forget about the Psalm 90 generation, uh, 80 years. Uh, it's, it, it is 80 years from 1949 to 2029. I'm seeing that number 2029 a lot. And of course, there is the uncertainty regarding the visitation of this meteor uh, Apophis and its close pass by Earth on April the 13th, 2029 which just happens to be a Friday the 13th, by the way, uh, for whatever that's worth. Uh, I think the number 13 is, is also a significant number. Uh, Apophis, uh, the ancient Greek, uh, uh, named after the ancient Egyptian deity who embodied chaos, uh, the opponent of light and order, uh, opponent of truth, you know, he appears in art as a giant serpent, so the symbol is a snake. And this flies by earth 50 days inclusive before Christ returns on our timeline. Right when the bold judgments are being poured out, uh, will it impact the earth? Uh, I couldn't tell you. I don't have a crystal ball. NASA doesn't think it will. But uh, things have a way of, of changing very rapidly in this present world that we're living in. Could something deflect it and cause it to impact Earth? Well, I suppose it could, but I don't think the impact of this or the non-impact, I don't think that's the issue. It's, it's uh, God gave us uh, signs in the heavens. Uh, this is certainly classifies as one. I don't think that anything this significant, which is, this would be unprecedented in a sense, I don't think that this 2029 meteor, uh, uh, I don't think that it's, it would, I think it'd be wrong to say that it doesn't have any relevance. Now, I'm not going to go through all the, 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 the facts surrounding 13 and the, the superstition that, that, that relates to that. Uh, you know, like the story of Jesus' Last Supper and his crucifixion in which there were 13 people present in the upper room on the, on the 13th of Nisan, the night before his death on Good Friday. Uh, and it, for a fact, this is, it's, it is true. There's no record of, of Friday the 13th being referred to as unlucky before the 19th century. Um, but just that fact alone, I find interesting. It's, uh, it only became in really in the 19th century is, is when it 13 became really recognized as being something unlucky, but really we're getting way off the, the, the right path here. I think I, I it's, I don't want this video to be about numerology or uh, biblical uh, astrology or, you know, the Maseroth or anything like that, the gospel and the stars. Those are other subjects that we can talk about. But I'm going to skip over most of the, all the information that I've compiled about the number 13. Just know that it's Friday the 13th when this comet passes by Earth. And we are in the latter part of the Great Tribulation period, probably the, the most severe period of all of the tribulation when this thing just happens to pass by that's given the fact that's providing that the rapture occurs in 2022.
It will be one for the record books because of how close that this object will come to our planet. And so it zooms past Earth on a Friday the 13th. Now, September 11, 2029, lands on a Feast of Trumpets. Jesus was born on a September 11, a Feast of Trumpets, according to Torah calendar, according to the creation calendar, Christ was born on September 11th. That date has been, at least in my research, been confirmed by other sources. It is highly likely he really was born on a September 11. We automatically think of 9-11, uh, September 11, 2001. Uh, I'm not going to write off anything as being insignificant. I, I, do, I don't think that was a coincidence, but but I'm telling you that September 11, 2029 lands on a feast of trumpets. That's what I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say. Then there's the absolute mess that we see the world in at the present time. I could discuss that. I, I could talk about that for for weeks. OK, that because it covers numerous topics and events. And the significance of September 11, 2001, you know, that Jesus's birth date coincides with September 11, 2001. If you follow this channel for any length of time, you know where I stand on the deadly wound that is healed, the rising of a new Islamic caliphate after its collapse or defeat uh, on October 31st, which was a Halloween in 1918, 29 years before Israel's rebirth in 1948 to 2029 is... 111 years. The, so the midpoint when the Great Tribulation would begin would, would be in 2025. If we're, if we're going to stick with our 2022 timeline here, the midpoint would be 2025. This 1979 Israeli-Palestinian conflict, if you count a jubilee from that 1979 conflict, that brings us to 2029. I told you I see this 2029 all over the place. So, the creation calendar states that on June the 8th of 2022, we will hit the 6,000 year mark since creation day one, which occurred on June 8, 3979 BC. June 8, 2022. Now, interestingly, that's several days after Pentecost, which is on a June 5 and 6. Pentecost, June 5 or 6, and June 8, 2022, we hit that 6,000 year mark. I mentioned this uh, next great American eclipse where America's crossed out April 8, 2024. Uh, recall. I want you to recall the August 21st, 2017 Great American Solar Eclipse. Uh, many of you actually witnessed that with your own eyes. 22 months exact, okay, from the t June 8 rapture uh, to this April 8, 2024 Great American Solar Eclipse. December 19, 2025 would mark the midpoint. I want you to think two witnesses lying dead in the street. The world's giving gifts to one another. December 19, okay? They're giving gifts one, to, to one another. Just days before Christmas, uh, they're giving gifts because the Antichrist has killed the two witnesses. The world is celebrating the fact that the two witnesses are dead, so they're giving gifts to one another on December 19. Jesus said, pray that your flight not be in winter. Well, that's in winter. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or the Sabbath. Well, it's the Sabbath. Uh, December 19, 2025 is both in winter and on the Sabbath. So I find that intriguing. Christ would then return 2550 days later on June the 1st, 2029. Now, don't let that disturb you, okay? I mean, you know, m most of watchmen are, they, they think of Christ returning in, in the fall on a Feast of Trumpets or a Day of Atonement. 
But this timeline would, would see him return 25, 50 days later on June 1st, which is a Sabbath. But then when we forward 75 more days to finish the timeline to the kingdom begin, beginning August 15th, 2029, well, now we're, we're in the area. We're right there in the ballpark. Because Feast of Trumpets beginning on Jesus' birthday, uh, tw September 11, 2029. So he would return August 15th. His birthday is September 11, which happens to be a Feast of Trumpets. That completes the timeline. The reason there's 75 days from his second coming to the kingdom is because there's 1335 from the midpoint to the kingdom. These are all biblical numbers that we've we've come to, to learn a long time ago. So it's 29 to 2029, is that the time frame? Is, is that what we're looking at, an exact 2,000 years? I don't know. Now given his birth date, September 11, 3 BC, then on September 11, 28 AD, Jesus would have turned 30 years old, okay? He would have been allowed to enter into the priesthood six days after his birthday on, on Yom Kippur, uh, the Day of Atonement, September 17, 28 AD. So he would return 2,000 years later in 2029 from the year his ministry began in 29 AD. This is what I find it interesting. Uh, May 14, 1948, Israel's Independence Day, or when they became a nation again, to a June 8, 2022 rapture is 888 months. 888 months. And that number 888 is uh, biblically uh, is related to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, since the Great Flood occurred 1656 years after creation which would have uh, it would have occurred in the year 2323 BC 2323 uh, that's what I'm seeing on the on the Gregorian calendar 2029 marking uh, well that would that would be if the rapture occurred in 2022 the Lord would returned in 2029, uh, that would mark 6,007 years since the flood. Now I'm going to put this timeline up here. Uh, I tried to make this as simple as I could. I didn't want to overcomplicate things here. I just want you to note the dates uh, here containing nines. You know, you, 3979, 29, 1949, 1979, 2029, as well as the numbers 11, 12, 30, 50, 80, 120, and 6,000. Those are really interesting numbers, and you're going to see all that in this timeline. I think the nine is interesting, all, all these dates containing nines, because nine tends to, to denote the finality of something. Uh, for what it's worth, Revelations has 22 chapters, ending with verse 21. There's no verse 22. Verse 20 is, is he which testifies these things, says, Surely I come quickly, amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. And verse 21 is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, amen. There is no verse 22. I don't know if that has any significance or not, but it's something to think about. Uh, so a 2029 return, a thousand year kingdom, I suppose, which would be, then end in 3029, the year 3029. So are we looking at an eternal state, a new heavens, new earth, a new, you know, where everything's recreated, made new? Are we looking at an eternal state in 3030? 3030 is, seems like it'd be a pretty fun number. They, uh, 2022 feast of trumpets rapture now if we if nothing happens in the spring 
and we're in the fall, a 2022 Feast of Trumpets rapture would have Christ return on a 2029 Day of Atonement, 2550 days exact. So if nothing happens this, this spring, then we've got that. However, a spring rapture would associate the kingdom uh, beginning around tabernacles in the fall, whereas a fall rapture would associate the kingdom more with winter or Hanukkah. So I think the weight of evidence favors a spring rapture simply because of tabernacles, just because of how the numbers work out. But there's also a good timeline for spring. Whatever the case, uh, these are just a few reasons why I think we are close. So when we look at this creation calendar, the year of creation, uh, now that's been now adjusted to 3979 BC, which is something I had nothing to do with, but I, I really do think these folks there at, uh, at Torah Calendar are working hard to try to, to refine uh, update, revise, keep up with the the evolving nature of all this. 3979 BC. So 2022 marks 6,000 years or 120 jubilees since creation. And then we've got all the blood moons. We've got the August uh, 21st, 2017 solar eclipse. The Revelation 12 sign pointing to the next Shemitah cycle. Uh, the 11th uh, Shemitah for Israel being uh, 2022 to 2029. All the sevens associated with Trump. Uh, the, uh, there's just a lot of stuff here, folks. To, uh, there's no reason for us to stop looking up. So if there's anything to this spring timeline, uh, or that we would leave here on June 8, 2022, which is just around the corner, And he would return 25, 50 days later on June 1st, uh, where we would then go 75 more days to the kingdom beginning August 15th of 2029. Feast of Trumpets beginning on Jesus' birthday, September 11, 2029. I just think that's interesting. I, I find it the most interesting of anything I've seen so far. Now, I want you to take note, Adam was created on the sixth day, so... Uh, that would be June 13, 3979 B.C. If that began this 6,000-year count, well, then just simply shift all the dates forward five days. But I don't think it would be as impressive a timeline as what we see when we, we begin at day one of creation, which uh, in which God said, let there be, not, be light. Uh, and once again, I want, I want to impress upon you that the fact that you should take note of of all these dates the 3979 29 1949 1979 2029 yeah uh, those are really interesting numbers but we also see 11 12 30 50 80 120 and 6000 here when it comes to these calculations so there's just something I want to say about all these Trump sevens, uh, because there's a lot of people out there that would just say, well, you know, this has got to be made up. It's got to be human engineered. Uh, got to be some strange anomaly that's associated with this, but it doesn't really have anything to do with God. Trump, Trump uh, I don't think, uh, knows much about what's going on either, but the, the Trump sevens could not be Here's my point, folks. The Trump sevens, this phenomenon that surrounds Trump and, and the number seven, this could not be human engineered. I don't want to go take the time to go through all of this. I will post it to my website. But the question is, why the number seven? You know, why not five or, or three or something? Why seven? Uh, seven means perfection and completion. And that's why our calendar, that's why our work, you know, work a week, our work rest week is seven days. Work six, rest, rest on the seventh. Same logic with years, 6,000 years, uh, labor, 
uh, 6,000 years of mankind, 1,000 year kingdom. So, you know, we're looking at 7,000 years from creation to new creation, from one creation to the other, from, from the original creation to new creation where God creates everything uh, uh, new, 7,000 years. And we know eight equals new beginning. I don't, I don't think that God is saying through these unprecedented Trump sevens that the, that the USA is ending or, you know, that there's seven years tribulation coming, uh, but that the present dispensation that we're in, the age of grace, is ending. Now, folks, you've only got three options as I see it. Now, I, I could be wrong. Uh, I'll leave that to you to decide, but this seven phenomenon associated with Trump, we either have to say this was number one, it was had, it was man-made. Okay, of course I don't see how Trump could have had any, any, uh, any part in uh, constructing this, given the fact that his birth is involved, or that anyone else could could for that matter. But what I'm trying to say, folks, is you can only say one of several things. You can say it's man-made. You can say it's divinely engineered by God. Or you can say it was brought about by chance. And you know what I have to believe. We don't worship a God of chance. I don't see how it could be human-engineered. I do believe it was divinely engineered by God, and I'll tell you why. Because unlike many Christians I know, I believe God decreed everything that was going to happen before he ever created the heavens and the earth. Uh, many don't share that same uh, far-reaching uh, idea as I. But folks, I believe that before God created the heavens and the earth he decreed the number of hairs that would be growing out of your head i do not think that there's anything we can't point to anything that were that we could say that a god who says i work thing all things according to the counsel of my own will that he's not a part of he's he's you can't point to something anything and say well there's one thing that god doesn't have to do with now, the, the argument, I suppose, could go, well, okay, Steve, uh, yeah, that's that may be true, but it, it still doesn't mean that he, you know, he decreed or designed or constructed, let's say, all these numbers that surround Trump. Folks, you can't have it both ways. Either it was man-made, divinely engineered by God, were brought about by chance. You don't have any other options to look to. And so I want you to explore this timeline. I want you to take some time to look at it. And I want you to see how this all works out and just tell me then, you know, if you want to take the time, I'd love to hear from you all, you folks. Just t tell me if you think that this uh, does give us uh, a continued uh, hope in a soon coming of the Lord. And I love you all, and I will talk to you again next time. Until then, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.